This uh, piece of news was interesting. The world's wealthiest people have at least $21 trillion in assets hidden in offshore tax havens, maybe $32 trillion stashed in the Cayman Islands and in Switzerland. What was your reaction when you heard this? Well, it's well known that this, uh, this figure exists uh, for a, quite a number of years. It's been hidden because of the globe's uh, growth over the past 20 years, uh, 25 years, nobody paid it much attention. But now that the world's entering into the synchronized global uh, pullback or recession, and in some cases a depression, then these items are, are coming to the surface. For example, the 20 to 30 trillion of wealth that's held offshore. And most of that wealth, of course, goes through Britain, goes through the UK, because Britain has the least regulated financial markets in the world. That's why MF Global was in Britain. Lehman Brothers went through Britain. Bernie Madoff went through Britain. The latest Peregrine scandal went through Britain. Uh, JP Morgan's two to nine billion dollar loss on their balance sheet happened in London. Uh, so London is really the headquarters for global banking fraud. And even though the economy is contracting in, in Britain, I notice that the banking sector is still making huge profits. The Barclays chief operating officer that was caught committing fraud, just got a golden parachute of eight million pounds. So it's, as I've said, you know, until you get rid of the financial terrorists, then you're gonna to continue to get, uh, you're gonna have these weapons of mass financial destruction blow up in your face and cause uh, all kinds of uh, death and destruction. It's as simple as that, really. I mean, don't, if you see a banker with Gucci's in a briefcase, don't let him on an airplane. Don't let any bankers on airplanes because they fly to countries around the world and they, they have weapons of mass financial destruction, whether it's in Greece or it's in the UK or all over Europe, and they blow up economies with fake debt and then they just strip those economies clean for any assets. So those are your, that's your big terrorist threat. Barclays just caught laundering um, along with HSBC, hundreds of billions of dollars in Mexican drug cartel. Barclays caught in a LIBOR scandal. HSBC caught in a LIBOR scandal. <laughs> so they, what, what more do you want? The HSBC funded the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Tony Blair, his response this week, he said, well, I'm not sure hanging 20 bankers at the end of the road is a great idea. Well, you know, at least he's thinking in the, you know, kind of the right way. He finally understands that it, it, it is the bankers. He, of course, is on the board of directors for J.P. Morgan doing deals in the Mideast, leveraging his contacts after his genocide in Iraq. So all is good in uh, the rosy city of the London. Well, I want to go back to this uh, Tim Geithner comment that you talked about, where he, he was talking about removing the incentives uh, in terms of the LIBOR fraud. And you think about that statement for a second. What he's saying is that these criminals shouldn't be prosecuted for committing crimes, but the incentives for them to commit the crime should be removed. So uh, I guess the, for example, Jerry Sandusky is a football coach in America who was caught raping children at the Penn State University. So if Tim Geithner was uh, asked to adjudicate about what should be the penalty for Jerry Sandusky, his solution would be, well, to remove the showers from the locker room, uh, remove uh, any suggestive material within Jerry Sandusky, remove the incentive for Jerry Sandusky to commit rape. But Jerry Sandusky committing rape, that's not the problem. And the public unfortunately doesn't understand that Timothy Geithner is a financial rapist. And they should see him in the same repulsive manner they look at Jerry Sandusky. Timothy Geithner should not be able to show his face in public without people vomiting in the street as they would if they see Jerry Sandusky, a serial rapist. Timothy Geithner is a serial financial rapist. Barclays Bank, HSBC, uh, uh, J.P. Morgan, Jamie Dimon, Lloyd Blankfein, these are serial kitty rapists. Now, this is what we're dealing with. What do you want to do about these serial kitty rapists? Do you want to remove the incentive for them to commit kitty rape, that is to say, rape children, or do you want to prosecute them for the crimes that they've committed? Unfortunately, America believes that Kitty rape or financial rape, if it's committed by Tim Geithner, is okay. Give him a pat on the back, a big bonus, and maybe he'll be running J.P. Morgan next year. Who knows? Kitty rapists get great jobs in America.